Hi and good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Yogesh. Thank you so much for joining uh, for the Investor Education Week. Um, we have done the Investor Education Week before, but we have done normally in the form of seminar. And um, this time we are doing it uh, as a webinar, as we all are aware about the COVID situation. So let me start first by uh, telling you, Ramadan Kareem, to all of you here, uh, our heartiest, warmest wishes. Uh, to everyone for the best wishes of Ramadan and the coming Eid. Uh, also, on behalf of uh, Century Financial, my team, myself, and from my family, a big vote of thanks to um, anyone who's from the healthcare or the medical area or who's involved into uh, first responder, midwives, doctors, nurses, everyone. If you have any relatives out there who are risking out their lives for us, thank you so much. And I wish that uh, this pandemic is over soon and things get back to normal. I wish you a happy, healthy life at this point of time. Please be very careful. Uh, I'm sure everybody has read the rules of the COVID, staying home, staying safe. Please use sanitizers, uh, precautions everywhere. Um, today, we are going to start with the Investor Education Week series. Uh, this is a third or fourth uh, time we are doing this. Um, this is something which we do uh, normally uh, in a year. We do it four or five times. This year, this is the first one since Ramadan has started. And uh, the very idea behind Investor Education Week uh, is very simple. To uh, break it down, the understanding of this market uh, for people. So what I'm going to do is first I will just uh, start with a, a very easy poll. And... Uh, uh, this is something, again, just for the basic understanding, I kind of want to understand uh, what is the kind of crowd I'm looking at. Uh, there are people who are beginners, are there people who are experts, are the people who are learning as well. So the session will be divided into uh, different kinds of uh, topics. Uh, you need to understand the session starts today and it will last till Thursday. Thursday is going to be the uh, last day of this session. And to take you through what we are going to do uh, in the entire sessions or throughout these six, seven days, uh, very easy. The idea is to first start with what kind of uh, products are available, where you can invest. And this will include different, different kinds of asset classes which we'll go through. Also, what we'll do is for today, the day will be dedicated just to understand the nature of these asset classes. So if we talk about gold, how the gold is priced what is the movement in gold what has been the past history and uh, how you know how often uh, people trade into gold what is the understanding so these kind of things uh, we will go through for the uh, next one hour and tomorrow we will again begin with a different topic tomorrow we'll understand that how the trades are done how to manage your risk then after that, we'll understand uh, the fundamental analysis. Then my colleague Vivian, he will take one session on uh, charts and technical analysis. And Thursday evening, we'll be doing our last session. And Thursday evening will be the day when we'll trade live on markets. Okay, you do your demo simulations, your demo accounts will be assigned to you. And you can put up to use the knowledge which you have gained in last three, four days. It is not obviously, uh, it's not about guaranteeing you that there is a profit or there's a loss. It is very simple. Uh, this session is there to spread awareness about what kind of products are available and how you can manage your risk. Okay. So um, I see there are a lot of uh, beginners over here. Uh, there are a lot of people who are in the stage of learning and there are a few people who are experts as well. So we'll try to devise this session accordingly. Right now, uh, going further, please understand this. So we will go through uh, a lot of explanations. I'm going to use my demo account just to show you the product library and we're going to discuss it. You can take screenshots. Uh, you can take pictures of the slides. It is a very general content. It can be uh, available anywhere, so you don't have to worry about it. It is just that it is in the flow, so you can keep taking pictures and you can always uh, do a read through uh, over internet there are there's a lot of content which is available but it's all about how much involved you want to get into it 
once you are aware about what kind of products are there then you'll be able to take your decision because with the understanding of the product and its nature comes the point that how much uh, you want to understand this how much uh, risk is there are you willing to take that risk or not and trust me if you have the understanding of the risk of a particular product your returns are equally proportionate so if you know that your risk profile is not very aggressive you are a conservative investor then you will avoid foreign currencies you will avoid cryptocurrencies because they are one of the riskiest assets so that way the idea is to first give you awareness about the products and then day on day move on to the point where you understand about fundamental analysis technical analysis uh, events news data oil inventories what is happening around the world everything so we'll try to make this session much and more uh, productive uh, i would suggest you if you have joined today just take this one hour out every day and before i forget uh to all the attendees who have joined today uh on thursday the timing uh because throughout the session the timing was mentioned around 4 pm so from sunday to wednesday it is 4 pm on thursday it's going to be 5 30 pm write it down i will anyways uh try to tell your rms to keep you informed about it but please write it down the session will be conducted at 5 30 pm because this is when the us market will open right so when us market opens at 5:30 pm you should be able to execute the trade you should be able to understand that where do i have to trade so these sessions will be conducted during that time and thursday is going to be the last day so we'll make strategies a day before wednesday evening we'll try to understand uh, with the charts and technicals and then we'll make a strategy that how to proceed for the thursday right now without further delay we'll start uh, understanding first and foremost why do we even invest and also please if you have any questions uh, ask me um, i have already started if you're not able to hear me if there's an audio issue uh, please let me know uh, you can type it and we will try to personally reach you out and uh, we are also recording this session so hopefully um, we'll be able to also check if there is anything we can do regarding the recording right okay now when we talk about investments first why do we invest why do anybody has to invest you have your money with you then why uh, would you invest anywhere why don't you keep your money under the bed and keep it really safe because investment comes with risk right if there's a risk in investment then why we always go through that risk why not just keep our money with ourselves why to invest into uh, stocks or properties or anything because the end point of the investment is that money should grow because if you keep your money with you inflation eats it away there was a very interest interesting uh, finding from 1970 till 2018 the average inflation not anywhere else i'll take example of uh, country as in india the average inflation rate year on year in india was around 8% since 1970 till 2018 the average inflation year on year was 8% so that means that even if you were getting 5 or 6% on your fixed deposit the inflation which is so what is what is inflation inflation means when the value of rupee depreciates because everything becomes expensive a bottle of water if you were able to buy, buy for 5 inr or 5 rupees now it is 7 rupees or 8 rupees so you are paying more rupees for the same bottle which means the value of your rupee has depreciated similarly how the inflation works here that today if you bought uh, let's say a house for 200000 dirhams then the value of the same house is 300000 the way next year which means the same house but you are paying more dirhams for that right that that is called inflation when the value of the currency gets eroded and the assets or the prices of things they become expensive now if i tell you that inflation has gone 8% up year on year since 1970 till 2018 in india which means the value of your money has been depreciating by 7 to 8% on an average if the value of your money has been depreciating by 8% which means if you were getting a fixed deposit a uh, bank rate of 5% or 6% also you're still losing 2% you're not gaining anything 
right so that's why that's where the investment choices that's where the investment asset class comes in that how many options are available to us for the investment what are their risk involved what are what are the rewards expected right so that's why we have to be very careful when we are choosing our asset class exactly somebody just answered that invest to have a second income see uh, let me just i have just put a put up a disclaimer slide over here so you all can read uh, investment to have a second income that is a good idea uh, everybody needs a passive income but please remember this investments are always subjected to a certain risk okay you may or may not get the second invest second income which we are talking about normally uh, your idea of the investment should be that investment over a period of time should grow the value of your money should grow or at least it should not erode generating a second income or not that is a motive but it's not a primary motive primary motive is that your money should keep growing okay it is not necessary that over a month it should grow by that much because investments can be really tricky even if you put money in a stock it can go up and down so please do not so this brings us to the very important point uh, which is also right now pointed out in the chat that yes second income is also important but looking at the risk we have to be very careful that we do not borrow money to invest please do not borrow money from your uh, friends family uh, and invest okay this is something at least in the markets which are related to forex commodities and stocks i know everybody invest into real estate and uh, they mortgage it from the bank and they keep paying installment that's that's a different kind even that is that also has a risk but then that's a secured loan over here when we are talking about when we are putting money in commodities market in currencies market the volatility is way higher than a real estate real estate is also dangerous it is also volatile but as i said when it comes to currencies and commodities the volatility is really high so you do not have to borrow money please do not borrow please do not leave your job thinking that you are going to make a passive income this session doesn't guarantees you that you are going to make a passive income out of you know after 4 or 5 days it's not necessary what you need is the right tools the right understanding a bit of also practice as well and then most important the emotional stability 85% of people they lose money in day trades because they let their emotions decide their trades okay let not your emotions be the factor and let not emotions get the best out of you and it's very difficult trust me it's very difficult to say this that keep your emotions out of this nobody can do it it's very difficult to keep your emotions out of this so that's why you need to learn and understand more now i asked you question that why do we need to invest i'm getting different different answers of course to have a second income your money should grow to beat inflation also we should uh, invest our money should grow but we should also invest obviously to beat inflation all these answers are right now which are the asset classes we can invest into depends on the risk and the reward of those asset classes so first and foremost investment is done with a spare amount if you have the spare money you should invest that and before that you should always prioritize your investments i'm going to show you something called a investment pyramid it's a very very basic pyramid i mean today if you google investment pyramid and put find images you will find thousands of images and these are different different investment pyramids depending upon the risk the reward and uh, individual preference so to build a, any pyramid you need the base to make any kind of investments first you need a base base is your saving account your cash your hard cash which needs to be with you so there has to be a base when you put your money into fixed deposits when you put your money into bank deposits nobody puts money in a fixed deposit just to get a 3 or 4% or a 5% return because the inflation and the currency depreciation is way higher than that so today if you're investing money just because okay i'm doing a fixed deposit so i will get 5% that 5% is not your preference what your preference is this is a cash i may need it sometime so i'm going to keep it in my bank deposit if i'm earning interest on it that's just fine but bank is not going to take my money away right that is always a common understanding that banks are safer banks are big banks are safe so i'm going to keep my money in the bank nothing wrong with it you should keep your money in the bank also a part of your total spare amount should be in the bank 
and then obviously once you have the base once you have the money which you know some money which you have kept aside for your rainy days for your rainy years now covid has taught us one very simple thing that why you should save this is the time when people are losing their jobs unfortunately when there are a lot of people uh, who are uh, not whose salaries have been reduced right all of us are facing this issue why because there is pandemic the business has answerable the businesses have to also survive so they have to reduce down the cost so there has been massive layoffs there have been um, salary deductions so what does this thing tells us very simple if i had gone by the pyramid i would be having some money right now to take care of myself because this is the exactly kind of rainy days and rainy years we talk about nobody knows for how long the pandemic is going to go so you all should have an emergency fund first have that emergency fund with you which you keep with yourself which you know is liquid at any point of time if you need you should have it if you don't have it now anyone from a age of 16 to 60 anyone who doesn't have an emergency fund now is the time you should have one okay so always keep that emergency fund so you put your money into the bank account that's the base of your pyramid the one which you see right now you move a little ahead we're talking about municipal bonds fixed interest securities just understand it simple we will go through these asset classes later on but for you to understand is once you have put money in a bank account you move up a little further and you said that okay now i would invest somewhere where i get my capital also back the money which i have invested after one or two years i should get that back and along with i need a certain amount of return right bond is one of the asset classes which gives you a fixed return so when you invest into government bonds uh, there is a certain amount of coupon or interest which comes to you every 6 months every one year that coupon may or may not be a higher percentage if the for example us government bonds are giving you a very low yield right now it depends on how the interest rates are priced but bonds are much safer why how does bonds work just initially i'll give a small introduction and then we can always dive in how the bonds work bonds is like a loan so the feature of a loan is that when you borrow money from someone you always have you when you borrow money from someone you always pay a interest if you borrow money from a bank you have to pay the capital back and you have to pay interest bond works how bond works in a way where you are lending money so if government is issuing bonds that means government needs money to make roads bridges infrastructure for any investment so what they do they need massive funding they turn towards public they say that okay we need money so we'll borrow from you and then we'll pay you interest over it and then after two or three years we will give you your money back this is called a bond so normally a bond certificate will have the name of the issuer which is government for example if i'm talking about a government bond then it's a government and for how long they will have their they will have my money so the maturity period when the maturity period is over i get my money back and coupon which is called also the interest that how much interest i will be paid over these 2 3 years right so this is how a bond works so bond is much more safer because if a government has borrowed money from you then government the chances of government going bankrupt is relatively less than a individual a bank or a company right so government bonds are a bit safer with less risk and you get your capital back expected and you get your expected returns so that's why you grow up a little that okay i'm going to invest into fixed fixed income products then once you have invested in these you grow up a little more you think okay now i want to take some chances so i will invest into properties i will invest into blue chip shares coca cola um so somebody just asked me again depending on the interest rate it would work same as fixed deposits right yes so somebody asked me question that if i put money in a fixed deposit account and if i put money in the bank how much will be the difference in the interest rate so exactly it depends that uh, on the interest rate if exactly the inflation could nullify that interest so if what happens is central bank they decide the rates the, the the rates which central bank decides commercial banks give those rates to the clients whether it is the borrowing rates or the lending rates okay so for example take example of japan if you are keeping money in japan right now japan has negative interest rates 
which means you will be charged so there's no point of keeping money in the bank right similarly if you buy japanese bonds the yield will be very low very low so that's why the borrowing funds in japan is very cheaper okay because the cost of borrowing is very cheap because the interest rates are negative so yes uh, the difference with what you put in a bank deposit what you put in a bond the interest rates on both bank deposits and bond not necessary that they will be equal but there will always be it the, the very base of decision is the interest rates which are set by central bank right then you move a little forward you think okay i'm going to invest into blue chip stocks real estate properties etc blue chip stocks what are blue chip stocks blue chip stocks are large cap companies so we'll talk into stocks we'll talk about large cap market capitalization companies com so companies with a lot of money let's call them as blue chip stocks which have a proven history track track record they have good companies they have shown profitability then real estate is your properties now you have moved up a ladder and you have after the fixed income you have started uh, investing into stocks then you move a little more further you have started day trades your futures your speculative trades in gold oil currencies etc so as you can see from the base of the pyramid to the tip what increases the risk increases from the lowest risk to keep money in the bank you have went to the highest of the highest to speculation so trading in gold silver currencies this is the most speculative thing you can do if you are trading on day on day basis right why because the risk is higher it is really volatile reward also is higher so if you are receiving uh, as you rightly said that in a bank account if you are receiving 2% or 3% a year if you put money into a stock you would receive higher but again stocks can be risky if a company goes bankrupt like coronavirus pandemic stock markets crashed right but bank accounts are still there so the idea is that you have a higher risk in stocks as compared to the bonds and the banks similarly when you talk about commodities and currencies speculative trades which is the tip of this pyramid the risk and rewards are higher so risk commodities are riskier than stocks currencies are riskier than stocks but obviously much more volatile so the move there is a lot of movement so risk and reward opportunities so from the bottom of the tip to the pyramid you grow you start investing into different areas but your risk also starts going up so it's your understanding where do you lie it's not necessary that if you have put money into bonds you have to do something in stocks diversification is good but understanding your risk today if you cannot see a loss in your portfolio at all you are a very conservative investor you should be restricted towards bond buying etc not more than that you are a kind of investor who needs a certain amount every year and you would like to have your capital back when it comes to equities and commodities and currencies this may or may not happen you have to be very careful there are chances of you making a good reward there are chances of you having a very high risk also so risk is something which can be managed and can be controlled and this is the a point that why we are having this session now moving on to the next part understanding the asset classes we are, we are going to talk about equities we are going to talk about fx commodities and everything let's start first so when we talk about asset class we are talking about a segment okay like um, a big basket where we are looking at the financial products which are into that particular basket so if i'm saying commodities there are a lot of products in that commodities when i say foreign currencies so there are a lot of other currencies in that forex asset class when i say equities so equities as an asset class involves stocks indices stocks are your shares indices is a stock index and we'll go through each one of them individually right now this is the flow chart of understanding the asset classes so i've kept the main ones here again there are a lot of asset classes but the ones which are relevant at this point of time will go through as compared to the session now we are looking at uh, let's say around Now we are looking at the point where uh, we can always see how many asset classes we will cover fx is your first so we are talking about foreign currencies foreign currencies currency exchange forex currencies this all is one 
so when you talk about forex market when you talk about currency exchange we talk about currencies market currency pairs it's just one forex market by far is the largest in terms of volumes every day around 5.8 trillion dollars of transactions happen in this so please remember this forex markets is one of the largest one of the most volatile and one of the most dangerous so you always speculate in the currencies market speculate means day trades never invest long term into a currency because what happens is and i will give you live examples also let's let's understand uh, how many types of currencies we are looking at so currencies is is same but there are classifications like major currency pairs right minor currency pairs cross currency pairs exotic currency pairs so major currency pairs we talk about gbp usd euro right we are talking about um, australian dollar canadian dollar these are majorly traded currencies trading in currencies became 24 hour so one important and most uh, significant point that you can trade into currencies for 24 hours monday to friday when the trades are when the markets are open you can always trade them even saturday sunday there's movement but you cannot uh, take a trade in online platforms but 24 hours the currency market is open so trading in currencies became 24 hour as it could take place in various time zones of asia europe and america london being located between the asian and american time zones as well as place to take advantage of this and has grown to become the world's largest forex market other large centers include us singapore hong kong and japan so these are the uh, major exchanges are located here and obviously these are one of the biggest we are talking about asia we are talking about america we are talking about europe we are talking about japan hong kong so these kind of uh, countries they have a very heavy trading china for example have a very heavy heavy trading volume so you see always a difference when uh, these markets open now okay now we have to understand about the currency quotes now to understand this what i'll do is i'll show you on the live platform that how do we see a currency pair okay today is sunday today markets are closed but we don't have to worry about it because our most of the platform related job starts tomorrow so once the markets are open right now we just can see how the currencies are quoted so what you see is a product library over here right all the things i have been talking about that these are in product libraries okay this is in a demo account and you can easily get a demo account uh, from your advisor uh, sorry from your rm and he will be able to assist you with more understanding as well right and please if you have any questions coming in uh, keep writing it if you want noted down at the end of the paper at the end of the session you can ask or if this is something which is really urgent you want to just clarify it right now before we can proceed please keep writing it so i'll answer i'll try to answer it now when we are looking at uh, currencies here this is commodities crypto currencies forex now let's look at currencies so currencies and forex still same i click i see the currencies market right now you see there are a lot of currencies aud cad aud chf aud cs so currencies can be traded against one another so there are ticker names so aud means australian dollar eur means euro gbp means great britain pound right uh, cad means canadian dollar uh, try means turkish lira so this way the currencies are quoted now to understand some basic things so let's look at the major currency pairs first which are traded the most so i go here currencies i search euro slash usd euro usd i see a buying price 1.0821 now the most important thing how to read a currency pair when you see so many currencies around you won't want to know that how to read this what are what are these numbers some of you would know some of you don't know so i'm just going to clarify it when you're looking at a currency pair see the first currency which is your base currency second currency is your quoted currency so if i say euro usd uh somebody just asked why there's no uh, aud inr can you make your own currency pair so uh, good question somebody asked me that why we cannot make our uh, uh, is is are the currency pairs made on their own 
So if there are two currency pairs, they can always be changed. For example, if I am going from India to Australia, I will have to change my rupees into Australian dollars, right? But uh, not all the currencies. So these platforms, the electronic platforms, we always see as much most most of the heavily traded currency pairs in volumes they are available. So for example, uh, dirham and dollars. Dirham and dollars is pegged. It doesn't move. So it's not there. It's still a currency pair, but it is not in this platform to be traded. So there is INR and USD. So dollar and INR is there, but uh, other currency pairs like AUD and INR or Pakistani rupee and INR, because sometimes there is a central bank regulation also that which currencies will be traded on online platforms and which not. So right now, uh, I don't think we have a AUD INR, but there are a lot of currency pairs and it is not something which can be created. It exists. If there are two currencies, it can be exchanged on an exchange. It can be, but on electro electronic platforms, there is a very limited. But even then, you get a uh, exposure of 340 pairs of currency. So if you reset your library and you see on currencies, there are around 340 pairs of currencies which are available. And obviously, there are more currencies than this on the exchange, but the heavily traded ones are these. Right. So I have another question. Are these prices live when the markets are open? Also, does the rates on your platform match and other platforms like Bloomberg? So very important question. Uh, what we'll do is first, the rates are live when the markets open and uh, it's a real time. Uh, there is a very, very slight difference between a market maker like these electronic platforms and the ones which is on exchange. But again, the difference is not too high. So that becomes a market maker's income. So we'll further, when we get into OTC platforms and exchange-based platforms, we'll discuss about this. But uh, important thing is when the market goes live and whatever prices movement you see, they are real time and uh, the rate at which they are changing is also real time. Right now, how to read a currency pair? We are looking at uh, Euro USD. We are looking at Euro USD as 1.08 to one. Now, with this means that if you want to buy one euro, how you decode the currency pair? If you want to buy one euro, you will pay 1.08 to one dollars. Right. Once again, if I have seen Euro USD at 1.08 to one, this is a buying price. That means to buy one euro, you have to pay 1.08 dollars. Right. One euro, if you want to buy, you pay 1.08 dollars. Now tell me one thing: if the price of Euro USD from 1.08 goes up to 1.09. Which currency is getting weaker? If I said that Euro USD to buy one euro, you are paying 1.08 dollars, right? This is what Euro USD is equal to 1.08 to one means. And if I am writing now, Euro USD is equal to 1.09. Okay. Give me an answer on chat that which which currency is getting weaker. Okay, I, I received one answer. Anybody else wants to try? If Euro USD goes to 1.09 from 1.08, which currency is getting weaker? Right, so I'm getting most of the answers. Dollar, exactly. Most of you have put dollars. Why dollar is getting weaker? Some of you have said Euro also. So for those who have said Euro, Euro is not getting weaker, why? Because earlier to buy euro, you would pay $1.08, right? Now to buy the same euro, you are paying $1.09. So you are paying more dollars to buy the same one euro, which means euro is getting stronger. Euro is not depreciating. Euro is getting stronger. Dollar is getting weaker. If I would say that, okay, euro from one point, euro USD from 1.08, it has come to 1.05. That means earlier I was paying $1.08 to buy the same euro, but now I'm paying $1.05 to buy the same euro. That means I'm paying less dollars to buy the same currency, which means dollar has become stronger and euro has become weaker. 
in this case euro is strong dollar is weak why because you are paying more dollars to buy the same euro see exactly tell me how it works for example okay let's consider this this is an iphone right today if iphone can be bought for 2000 dirhams right tomorrow over a period of time let's say iphone value from 2000 dirhams reaches 1000 dirhams now if it has reached 1000 dirhams which means the value of this iphone depreciates right earlier to buy this iphone i was paying 2000 dirhams but now to buy the same phone i'm paying lesser dirhams so dirham becomes stronger and the value of this phone becomes weaker right this is how you read exactly if you if you want you can do this in your mind and you can again try so let me let me tell you or give you another example of this so let's take another example another major currency pair gbp usd now gbp usd is 1.2109 okay this is your buying price which means to buy 1 pound in dollars you would pay 1.2 dollars now if the price of gbp usd from 1.21 falls down to 1.19 falls down to 1.19 which currency is becoming stronger gbp usd is 1.2109 right if right now the price of gbp usd comes down to 1.19 which currency is becoming stronger right so most of you have sent the answer as okay i'm still getting answer for pound guys which currency is becoming stronger if the price from 1.21 is going down to 1.19 usd now is getting stronger so some of you have got this wrong again because it's the it's it's the same same people so that's why uh, i'm just focusing a little, little more let's try to take this example again no problem this is how you read every currency pair i will explain it to you again so if you are buying one pound for 1.21 dollars right you are paying 1.21 dollars to buy the one pound and now the gbp usd came down to 1.19 which means to now to buy the same pound you are paying less dollars if you are paying less dollars to buy the same pound which means your dollar has become more valuable it has become more stronger so pound is weaker here and dollar here is stronger right please just whenever you have time do this again in your head and see this is how you read every currency but now i'm going to remove dollar from here okay i'm going to make it a bit more challenging but remember what i have explained it to you i will take any random currency pair so let's say for example um okay let's take euro and euro and japanese yen okay now there is no dollar here there is one currency euro and japanese yen which is euro jpy is equal to 105.84 first and foremost now i've explained you two currency pairs so i'm just going to ask for this one if you see euro jpy is equal to 105.84 exotic currency okay somebody asked me for exotic currency pairs also i will give you the example as well uh, we'll just do these three four examples again so if i'm looking at euro jpy so euro jpy is called a cross currency pair right because there is no dollar involved into it it's a cross currency euro pound these are cross currencies if there was dollar it would still be a normal pair but this becomes a cross currency pair now euro jpy is equal to 115.84 if the value of euro jpy goes to 118.84 does jpy becomes weaker or stronger if euro jpy value goes to 118.50 for example does jpy become stronger or weaker just write strong or weak okay so i have i have few more candidates who answered last time also i want the repeated answers so I want to see if they have understood the concept. What happens to the JPY? So some of you are saying JPY becomes weaker. Some of you are saying JPY becomes stronger. 
So if Euro JPY from 115 goes to 118, the pound becomes, uh, the uh, yen becomes weaker. Why? Because earlier to buy the same Euro, you were paying 115 yen, right? Now to buy the same Euro, you are paying 118 yen. So the JPY as in Japanese yen is becoming weaker because you are paying more yen to buy the same euro. Just remember this, whichever is the first currency is your base currency. So if you are buying euro JPY, you are buying euros, expecting euro to go, up, go higher. So from 115, if it goes to 118, you are shedding more yen to buy the same euro, which means yen is becoming weaker, euro is getting stronger. Right. So do a bit more. I'm just going to take one last example of exotic currency pairs. Let's take USD, TRY, which is USD and Turkish Lira. Again, same concept. When I say USD, Turkish Lira, which means to buy one dollar, you have to pay 6.9 Turkish Liras. OK, now understand this. If USD, TRY, which was 6.9, has gone to 3.9. Or just to make it simple, it has gone down to three. USD TRY, which is 6.9, is 6. It is 6.9. It has gone to three. Now type which currency is becoming stronger and which is becoming weaker. Just type USD dash Turkish lira dash. From 6.9, it has come to three. Which currency is becoming stronger and which currency is becoming weaker? Okay, uh, my screen is full. If, if somebody is not able to see my screen fully, I have tried to expand the view. Just one second. Okay. 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 Turk is stronger. Somebody is saying Turk is stronger. Somebody is saying Turk is stronger. Dollar weaker. Weaker dollar. Turkish weak. Somebody who said Turkish dollar will uh, Turkish lira will be weak. Turkish lira will not be weaker. USD is so. When we say to buy same dollar, we were paying six point nine. Okay, if you zoom few things when showing figures, which is very small. Okay, I'll just work on my layout. So when we are looking at USD Turkish Lira, it was six, six point nine. Now it has come down to three, which means to buy same dollar. Earlier I was paying six point nine liras. Now I'm buying I'm I'm paying less liras to buy the same dollar. Same concept which we have run through. If you are paying less to buy the same currency as compared to before which means the other currency is becoming stronger. If you're paying more to buy the same currency, then the other currency is becoming stronger, right? So in this case, dollar is becoming weaker and Turkish Lira is becoming stronger, right? So this is how, okay, somebody asked me, can you explain when do we need to buy a currency uh, and when we feel it will get stronger? <laughs> yeah, this is a question which, uh, 100% of the people would like to know the answers to that. How do, when do I know that the currency is getting stronger so I can buy it? So what we'll do is, sir, we'll run through these sessions and this is what we'll try to figure out about every asset class that whenever we are expecting what, what is the basis of the fundamentals or technicals and how do we take a call when to buy and when to sell, right? For now, let's keep it to the asset classes. So this is how the currencies work. Guys, always remember the most easiest way to do is Whichever currency you see in your front, let's say I, I had a very random currency pair, USD Hungarian front, right? If I search it, for example, here, USD HUF. USD Hungarian front is $328, for example, which means to buy $1, you pay 328 Hungarian fronts. Tomorrow, if this goes to 320, which means Hungarian fronts, becomes stronger. You are paying less Hungarian fronts to buy the same dollar. If it goes to 350, which means now you are paying even more Hungarian fronts to buy the same dollar. So dollar is getting stronger and Hungarian fronts is getting weaker. 
uh, another example which came to me that one dollar is equal to 75 INR. So dollar is a foreign currency and rupees is a base currency. So if I'm writing uh, USD slash INR is equal to 75, that means USD is your base currency. INR is your quote currency because you are saying dollar is equal to 75 rupees, right? So USD becomes your base currency. The other currency, INR, becomes your quote currency. But that simply means, okay, that simply means that to buy one dollar, you have to pay seventy-five rupees. Okay, uh, guys, I am getting uh, messages. Uh, there is a point. You might see a disruption in the signal or in the voice. Please bear through it. Uh, I'm trying to get the best of the networks. It is just a lot of congestion going on. But uh, the as I said, that we'll do this every day, so it will become easier. Uh, please just bear, have patience, and uh, the, the connection will improve. Now, moving on to the next asset class. So these are your currency pairs. Okay, There are a lot of currency pairs, which you can see. If you scroll down, you'll be able to see a lot of currency pairs here. Right. Now, once we have understood currencies, we will we'll talk about cryptocurrencies also. But for now, uh, let's just move on to the uh, next slide. OK, now the. Everybody, I hope, can see my slides. Yes. Now, coming back, we are looking at another asset class, which is called equities. We will talk about equities, and after that, we'll talk about uh, indices and commodities before we wrap up this session, and then uh, we'll, we'll work on what we have to do tomorrow. Now, coming back, we'll talk about equities. Please remember this. This happens uh, very often, and there is a lot of confusion which happens over here. In terms of investments, we are going to talk about equity market equity market means stock market just keep it simple don't get into a much more explanation that equity means this stock means this whenever you hear about equity market that is referred to the share market or stock market stocks shares they have a very uh, literal difference but when we talk about stocks you're talking about shares when you're talking about shares, you're talking about shares. When you're talking about equities, global equities, you're talking about shares. OK, so always remember this. When I say equities, we are talking about share markets as in general. OK, now, how does equities work and why shares exist? So everybody understands about what a share is. OK, sir, uh, I'm repeatedly getting a notification from uh, one attendee. There is a problem in connection. Uh, sir, if there is a way, if you can hear me, um, I'm trying to do this better. Uh, just be a bit, bit patient with the signal. Uh, we'll try to, again, reach you out uh, in personal and uh, try to finish this session. Um, meanwhile, just check uh, if there is a problem at, at your connection. Also, just try to refresh it or maybe try to join again. You might get the signal. So uh, going forward, we are looking at equities. Now, why shares exist? Shares is shares is an asset class which uh, is very simple. It is about business. So today, if I am an individual and if I want to start my business, to start a business, we need capital. Where do I need? Where do I get capital from? There are two ways. Either I can put my own money, which I have saved. Second, I can borrow money from the bank. But if I borrow money from the bank, then I will have to repay that money and I have to pay interest on that money year on year, right? That can affect the profitability of my, my project. Why? Because anybody who starts a business does not start thinking that, okay, I will start today and in the next two months, I will wrap up everything, right? Every business, when we talk about 
we talk about the point where this business will run for 24 years 25 years 26 years correct so we always have to understand that if i borrow money for that long i will keep paying interest here on year and it is going to affect my profitability right but if my if i put all my money into my business then tomorrow if the business didn't work then i have no cash to spare so what we do there are ways where you try to find business partners right who are your business partners business partners are those people who have faith in your business right who are ready to take the risk who will not ask for a year on year interest and they will not ask for the profitable like that uh, they will not ask uh, you that you know guarantee us that there is going to be a profit these are the people who would like to take a risk and they will invest with you in your business because they have a certain faith right now when companies like apple globe uh, google microsoft ibm boeing walmart caterpillar these are big companies so whenever they want to start a new expansion or something or let's say whenever they wanted to start the first thing what they did let's say first time when steve jobs wanted to increase the production of computers and iphones and everything he went to the people and he said see i want to borrow a million dollars for example a million dollars if you borrow from 100000 people right so which means if from 100000 people you borrow 10 dollars from everyone you have your million dollars with you do a math if you borrow 10 dollars from 100000 people each person gives you 10 dollars you have your 1 million dollars with you right so these 100000 people whom you have borrowed 10 10 dollars they become your business partners in other words the capital 1 million which you needed you took from 100,000 people in form of 10, 10 dollars. So those 100,000 becomes your 100,000 shares, right? 10 dollars from every person becomes your share price or your IPO price. So this is how the concept of share emerges. Share is more like uh, a part ownership in a business. So if you're holding 100 shares of Microsoft, which means you have bought 100 shares of Microsoft at a price of X. That means that you have invested into Microsoft and you have bought its shares. Buying shares means buying some ownership into the company, right? You have faith in the business, so you have invested, right? Now, what happens if the business is doing well? There will be more people who would want to buy Microsoft shares, who want to invest into Microsoft how you invest into Microsoft by buying Microsoft shares. So if the business of Microsoft is going well, then they would want to invest into Microsoft. But shares were only 100,000, right? So what happens? Because of excessive demand, the price of the share increases. So the same share which you bought for $10 is now $15 because of high demand. So what do you do? You sell your share to somebody else. Instead of you bought at 10, you are selling it 15. So $5, this is called capital gain. Okay, this is where your capital grew. This is one form of income. Second, Microsoft saw that he has been my shareholder and we have made some profits. Let's try to reward our shareholders with a bit of our profits, which is called dividend. So dividend is a second kind of income. First kind of income is your capital gain. So there are two kinds of income which can happen on a share. If you buy shares and keep it, there are quarterly dividends which come depending company to company. Not all companies give dividends. There are different different companies which give dividends and there are a few companies which do not. So the, there, there are ways that you can earn dividend and there, there is a way that if stock goes up, then you make a capital gain. So what we understand here, guys, this is very important part. Make a note of it. There are two ways that an investor can earn money in by investing into shares. One is when the price of the share goes up. That's your capital growth. Second, when you receive a dividend. So if you're holding 100 shares of any company and the company declared $1 dividend per share, so you receive $100, right? So this is something which is a, a practice done by many companies and other companies, they whatever profits they have, they reinvest into the business or they reinvest into R&D. So their stock price starts going up. So there are different, different ways, right? This is the concept of share. Now there is when you have understood how a stock or a share work we also need to understand a concept of a index or a stock market index a stock market index 
when we hear about uh, all of you are from uh, different different parts of the world i see some people from india i see some people from uh, um, from us as well i see some people from um, africa as well some people from different parts of the world so you all have one thing which is your stock market index every country has a stock market index it's like a health indicator how index works is i am going to explain it to you somebody asked me till what time is us market open so the timing for the us market is 5:30 pm uae time is when the us stock market opens monday to friday 5:30 pm so if you want to buy stocks of us you have to trade uh, you you can only do this at 5:30 pm uae time and it is uh, long till 12 o'clock 12 or 12:15 am uae time right coming back to the point the stock market index now i'm going to take you again to yes okay now currencies we covered we are going to touch base to commodities shares we have covered we will talk about indices and share baskets as well so first index how does an index works so index is basically a kind of tracker which shows you that a uh, like a uh, overall value of a bunch of shares so how does it work what does the content what does the index page in your book does index there is a page of index which is in your book it shows you the contents of the entire book right what does the book has sorry my signal i think is just weaker yeah that what are the signals uh, what are the contents of the book similarly when we talk about the stock market index it is a statistical measure of a bunch of stocks now us stock market has 10000 shares today if i want to know that what is the performance of us stock market today how is us stock market performing today how will i get to know i have to go through all the shares all the companies together in us and i have to calculate okay this is up by 2% this is up by 1% this is up by 5% this is up by 8% how will i calculate this and it will move up and down so fast to take control of the situation a stock market index was created for every country it's like a health indicator what does it tell you it tells you statistical measure of a group of companies so let's say if i tell you uh, okay let's go down and see there is a stock market index of us called us 30 okay us 30 is a stock market index of us few things which you should remember here one country can have more than one stock market index if us can have more than one index which means if one index you are seeing is us 30 there can be more than one index also it is about how the companies are grouped together right what is the need to group the companies together because you want to see the overall performance you want to see the overall performance and the good part is you can actually invest into that group of companies right so when you talk about index us 30 also remember one more thing the number by the end of every index it indicates how many companies are present in that index which means if you see us 30 it means that this index is tracking 30 us companies now the question is 30 us companies which 30 us companies these are the companies of the name which you have heard of but i am not always going to be going to be there to tell you this how to find it on your own if you are on the web right now those who are on the phone i think it might be a bit uncomfortable to you know switch browsers but those who are on the laptop try to do this open a separate tab and just write components of us 30 index search for it okay just take there is a there is a result of cnn money take don't take wikipedia wikipedia may or may not be updated 
take any result which shows you components of so us 30 is also called dow jones okay and uh, so dow jones and us 30 it's the same thing let me show you the tab over here okay now i have opened this in mine you can open it in yours see 30 companies which are in us 30 index so apple american express boeing caterpillar chevron cisco coca-cola disney exxon mobile goldman sachs ibm johnson and johnson mcdonald's microsoft nike pfizer png verizon visa walmart walgreen right these are the names which you have heard and these all 30 companies are in this index and if the index goes up and down it is because on the movement of this now see a lot of them the percentage change for for one day which was their closing price if you see one and a half percent 0.6 percent 0.6 percent so if there are most of the companies on the higher side of it you will see the index going up if there are companies which are going down you will see the index going down now one more important thing why would you invest in an index rather than an individual stock if you buy apple shares and tomorrow apple shares price comes down you are making a loss but if you buy dow jones as an index or us 30 as an index which along with apple has 29 more companies which this index is tracking which means the value of this index will not move will not only move on the basis of apple there are 29 more companies responsible for that so maybe apple is down but other companies are doing well so you get a diversified exposure diversification means spreading the risk into different different asset classes or different different sectors today us 30 has apple and boeing and caterpillar caterpillar construction company boeing air flights right airplanes apple tech american express digital payment right exxon mobile oil company ibm again tech company johnson and johnson consumer staples and uh, pharma so you get a very diversified exposure when you invest into an index and every country has the index so if you go back to the same screen here now when you are back to the same screen you will see there is us 30 which is called your dow jones if you scroll down there are more indices like fang plus fang what does it stand for what does it stand for? Anybody who can really write quick and send me F A N G. What does FANG stands for? F A N G. I'll give you a hint. A can be multiple companies. The acronym FANG. What does it stands for? So there is an index which tracks the FANG companies. And there are a few more companies which is tracks, and you can invest into a FANG index also. Yes, I'm getting answers now. Okay, F stands for Facebook, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google. Exactly. So there is Facebook, Apple, and A can be for Amazon, Apple, Alibaba, Netflix, Google. A, exactly. I'm getting most of the answers, and these are right. So those who have wrote Amazon is right. Those who have wrote Apple also is right. Those who are writing uh, Alibaba is also right. These are the stocks which are in trend right uh, somebody asked me from this can i trade in nifty index you can trade in nifty index also so nifty is here by the name of uh, india 50 all you have to do is just go for a search and you can easily search this right so there is see canada 60 euro 50 france 40 german 30 australia 200 the number by the end of the index denotes how many companies 50 right here Right. So this is how an index market works. You have to remember this, that index is it's, it's a combined. It's like a tracker and it's combined measure of all the stocks which are available. So some will track 30 shares, some will track 500 shares, some will track X amount of shares. So just be uh, more familiar with the index. You can read about it more. This concept of index where you can invest into one index but indirectly you are exposed to 30 different companies right your investment is distributed widely so this concept of index you should remember why because next just excuse me okay because next what we see 
something called share basket. Uh, can you please give an idea of margins to be kept for each asset class investment? So somebody just asked me about the margins. So what we'll do is, guys, since we have distributed this session into uh, four days, tomorrow will be the day when we will talk about the live working of the platform because to today is Sunday either way. So um, there is uh, no movement in the asset classes. So what we can do is uh, we can again tomorrow look into the buying and selling, margins, leverage, short selling, everything. So that will be a session for tomorrow. Uh, till then, just stay with us. Um, another question somebody has asked, investing in FANG is again not diversifying, right? Absolutely. So diversifying means you diversify not only into different companies. Uh, a very good question. Somebody asked me that if I invest in a FANG index, that means an index which is tracking Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google, Amazon, right? Is it still diversification? It is diversification in those companies. But the true meaning of diversification, this is not. Because you're still heavily invested into the tech sector. Tomorrow, if tech sector goes down, your index also is down, right? So absolutely right. It is not the kind of diversification you need to have. Your diversification should be more in different, different sectors. Guys, once again, uh, thank you for being uh, patient with the, uh, uh, the voice and the network. I know it's not very smooth. So we are trying to record this session. Most probably we'll put it on YouTube. And uh, you can always uh, see this, right? Now, uh, moving on to another kind of, and this comes into equities itself. It's a different asset class which has been newly created, which is called share baskets. Okay, looking at share baskets right now. So when you click on share baskets, you will see. Now, this time, what has happened? Let's say share baskets are much more theme based. So you say, for example, Yogesh, I want to invest into uh, 5G technology. 5G is going to be the new thing. I'm sure most, most of you have heard about 5G. Uh, Huawei was also one company which was coming up with 5G. And that was one reason also that why uh, US banned Huawei, uh, why Trump banned Huawei in US, right? So 5G technology is going to be one of the uh, important creations and it's going to be the one of the best technologies uh, which will uh, take over 4g so if you say tomorrow that i want to invest into 5g related companies now there are one ways when we are first of all looking at the share baskets let me just also go to my slide so i can show you Okay, now share baskets when we talk about share baskets, it's, it's a very emerging asset class. This has been created by uh, one of our brokers only. So share baskets, again, now you know the concept of index. How does share basket will work? Share baskets, it's like a collection of shares, but from the same industry sector. Same industry sector means today if I'm looking at a 5G share basket, so it's a basket of stocks all 5G related companies are into it. Those companies which are dealing in 5G products, which have an exposure to 5G investment, which is it. So if you're, for example, 5G, then you talk about streaming. What is the streaming basket? Streaming basket has exposure to shares like Netflix, uh, Roku, Disney, right? This, this is called streaming basket, AT&T, Foxconn, Viacom, all different kinds of stocks. Apple is there, Amazon is there, any company which is doing streaming. So if you talk about, uh, say, mobile payments basket, right? There's a mobile payment, payment baskets also. So there's 5G, gaming, mobile payment, renewable energy, cyber security, uh, social media, driverless cars. These are some themes and so many of them are very futuristic. So if you want exposure to any of those themes, you can invest into the whole basket. This basket will have X amount of companies that can be told to you by your RMs and by others that how many companies are involved into it. So you will select, okay, these are the companies which are in this basket. So I can buy and sell this basket altogether. So if you now go back and look at your uh, screens, I'm oh, sorry, let me share the screen here. Yeah. So these are the baskets and these baskets have buying and selling values, okay? Why they are buying and selling values? So that you can buy unit wise, different, different baskets. If for example, streaming basket is 
four thousand one hundred dollars, right? Which means you can buy one one unit of streaming basket for four thousand and one hundred dollars. Similarly, if you buy mobile payment basket, so mobile payment basket is three thousand eight ninety three. So one unit of mobile payment basket is three thousand eight hundred ninety three. So this way you can buy the mobile payment basket also, streaming baskets also, and these baskets will give you a diversified exposure again. So it is a good thing to invest into a basket. It's a again, it gives you a theme based uh, approach where you would invest into either Apple or Amazon by investing into a big tech basket. You can invest into different. Somebody asked me, uh, what do you mean you can sell the basket altogether? So you can sell the basket, mean, which means you can buy and sell it. So if you bought at 3950 and if it goes to 33960, so making $10 on the entire basket. And those baskets have all these shares proportionately spread. So you can buy and sell the whole basket rather than going individually for the shares. See, this brings us to a very important point. Trading in a basket actually reduces your overall cost also. It is cost efficient. Why? Because if you wanted an exposure in, uh, let's say, big tech, you will buy first Apple, Facebook, Alphabet, Microsoft, Intel, Google. If you buy all these six companies separately, you will incur a cost separately for all of this. Investing into a big tech basket, you just have to pay when you buy, pay when you sell the whole basket. But you don't have to buy all shares together. Uh, somebody asked me, FANG is a basket rather than an index. See, uh, FANG is an index. Okay. Uh, share baskets and index, it's, it's not a very uh, difficult line. It is the same concept altogether. Uh, FANG is, so FANG name is Facebook, Apple, uh, Amazon, Netflix, Google. But uh, FANG is not only containing those stocks. FANG has other stocks as well. So that's why we are still telling it as an index. But the concept is same. Share basket is more uh, economical uh, buying than buying separately. Absolutely, it is more economical buying separate than buying separately because if you have to exp you have to buy ten different shares, Apple, Google, Disney, etc. And if you have a basket in which all these shares are already combined, you just have to buy the basket, and the value of basket goes up and down uh, depending on the performance of those companies. Then basket is obviously a good idea. So you can always stick onto the share baskets, right? So we have covered shares, we have covered indices, we have covered uh, share baskets, we have covered currencies also. Now, one of the most important commodities, guys, uh, one of the most important uh, asset classes, which we will talk about is your commodities, which we will talk about is your commodities. Now, this is going to be uh, the last asset class which we talk about before we throw some light on cryptocurrencies and the risk. But uh, we'll just elaborate this a bit because uh, commodities are something which is uh, really, really important and we need to understand this. Now, commodities first, these are your natural resources. Okay. Commodities as in natural resources, which means anything which grows on earth. So we are talking about oil, we are talking about uh, rice, wheat, sugar, coffee, gold, silver, right? These are your natural resources. So when we talk about commodities, we're investing into these kind of products. And commodities are one of the most important markets. Heavily traded, apart from Forex, commodities are heavily traded. There are a lot of ways uh, when, uh, so one of the uh, examples, whenever people are uh, in 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 a into a rush mode or when they're uh, sensing a great uncertainty gold prices always rally because gold as a commodity has that intrinsic value has that emotional attachment today if even now also every time when a festival comes across uh, whenever there's a chinese new year or whenever there is diwali in india you always see gold prices moving higher right so there's a sentimental value attached to gold prices so commodities again is a, it's a very important market a uh, few features of commodities that returns on commodities is based on changes in prices uh, emerging market countries drive most of the increase in demand so india is one of the largest importers of gold uh, china again we a uh, lot of other countries which are emerging markets they have huge demands of gold uh, commodity prices are highly cyclical. This is very important to remember. Uh, commodities 
can be in a trend for a very long period of time if it has been going up it can go up for a very long period of time but then there is a cycle also which follows which is called seasonal which i will explain it to you due to supply lag any change in demand would impact the spot prices so commodities again are based on demand and supply take very good example for example if rice as a commodity tomorrow if there are weather conditions which are not stable and the supply of rice gets disrupted and rice prices might go higher uh, one more example what happened with pork uh, when in china there was a swine flu millions of pigs were being killed and the demand the supply of pork actually reduced overnight the pork prices they bounced up so those investors who were buying and in, investing into pork they uh, made money similarly uh, commodities you have to have a storage cost which you have to pay so if you buy oil gold in large numbers you have to store it somewhere and then that's why many commodities are invested through future contracts so future contract something which we can always uh, discuss for now let's try to understand how commodities work now commodities when we try to classify it there are hard commodities and there are soft commodities there are a lot of commodities which you will find it here i will take you to the product library also and show you so uh, commodities in the form of energy metals energy means oil fuel so heating oil crude oil natural gas low sulfur gas oil these are your energy based commodities when you look at metals we're talking about precious metals and base metals base metals are your industrial metals metals which are used mostly for industrial purposes like copper zinc aluminum lead precious metals gold silver platinum palladium now why precious metals are called precious metals they are precious because their occurrence is very rare any commodity which you which which takes time to mine and the mining is not easy so their occurrence is really rare you just don't find gold anywhere right so that's why we call them precious metals gold platinum silver palladium gold one of the most important commodities in the market gold prices so while we are talking about it since we have another 15 20 minutes let's try to just keep looking at these also so i'm looking at commodities which are your natural resources agriculture products click on commodities you will see so you can click on sub type so let's start with precious metals gold now this is gold please remember guys to understand the pricing of gold right now you see a price of 1744 1744 wait let me share my screen with you okay now gold prices the buying price is 1744 if you see this let me just reset so this is commodities i click here on commodities then i select precious metals and i see gold now any one of you can anyone just type the price of gold in dubai right now how much is the price of gold in dubai what do you see even try to google it also if you can google it just send me one price 24 karat gold here in dubai how much it cost i hope one of you is searching normally we do this in the form of seminars so it's it's much more interactive but uh, i am i'm glad that many of you have been answering so many questions and asking questions so this is uh, turning out to be really well and i hope uh, the next four days also are the same so 24 carat is 2110 2110 211 should be 211 so this is per grams uh 24 carat gold so this is 2211 the rams per gram if i'm not wrong yeah so exactly so those who are getting for 22 carat for example 198 the rams right uh, for uh, 22 carats 198 the rams 24 carat is 211 the rams 
so now you understand how the pricing is done in grams per gram but when you look at gold in live in us market when you will be trading and investing in gold you will not get this price 211 dirhams 198 dirhams you will get prices in dollars us dollars so the order ticket which you see right now 1744 this is 24 karat gold 1744 dollars 1744 dollars and for 1 ounce of gold what is 1 ounce 1 ounce is equal to 31 grams so this price what you have sent me is for 1 gram 211 dirhams what i am showing you and how you trade in the global market for 1 ounce of gold you pay 1744 dollars and that's how it goes up and down if you are buying 10 ounces of gold you are buying gold worth 17440 dollars if you are buying 1 ounce of gold you are paying 1744 dollars so be in a habit of looking at the gold prices this way because this is the global price right also remember this gold these days moves easily around 20 to 25 dollars in one day gold prices easily move around 20 to 25 dollars this is the average price range of gold these days how do uh, how do you see this see this is a friday closing okay i select here court panel okay see this the lowest price 1728 1728 highest price 1752 it see it is written over here lowest lowest 1728 highest 1752 so that means gold moves easily 20 25 dollars so if you have bought 10 ounces of gold you might see a 250 dollars profit you might see a 250 dollars loss if it doesn't go in your favor so be very careful when you are buying gold it is easily movable 20 30 dollars is not a big deal in the times like this volatility has increased a lot So you have to be very careful, right? Now let's have a bit of a look of how gold has moved in last eight ten years. So you will get a fair share of idea, and I will try to point out the events also when it happened. If let's see, like I also remember. So you go here, you go to the chart. Now, guys, you are looking at here the gold prices. Just zoomed in. so what i'll do is again there will be a session which will be taken care of on the technical basis so you don't have to worry about the charts and everything just look at this as a movement okay i'm changing the duration so this is since 2000 but the most important time will be here okay now if you see uh let me select the cursor to yes now if you see 2008 2008 what happened in 2008 i'm sure everybody knows about what happened in 2008 2008 is when recession came in right now 2008 recession came and then central bank started printing more us dollars now it takes us back to the point if you are printing more currency then supply of currency becomes so much that the value of currency starts depreciating now the value of currency depreciates the asset which is valued against that currency it starts appreciating so dollar started depreciating and we saw gold prices moving higher how high 2009 gold price was 930 dollar per ounce in 2011 it was almost 1900 dollar per ounce which means in 2 years from 900 dollars it went to 1900 dollars what what was the trigger which Expo, which made gold prices go up exponentially one the main trigger was the panic which came during 2008 right there was a lot of panic uncertainty recession happened so people started switching so please remember this during the asset classes most of the time it happens that when there is some panic recession people start taking money out of the shares they start buying gold with it okay so gold is also called a safe haven so we saw gold prices moving higher in 2011 and i told you in the beginning that gold has the commodities have a cyclical trend if it goes up it might go up for a while if it comes down and it is into a long term trend of coming down then it might continue that so what happened with gold here was this it went up to 1900 in 2011 and then central bank started reducing that printing of currency and eventually ended it when the economy was stable so we saw 2013 gold prices coming down from 1900 to the lowest which went down to 
2015 when it was lowest 1050 right but for four years if you can see and i'll just make a again here so for example if you see for four years it remained at this level 14 it was 1400 the highest then came down to 1150 and then again 1400 and then lowest 1150 and then again uh, 1000 and then again 1350 but could never break 1400 levels until 2019 when it has broken and now gold has gone up to its next resistance which is 1700 so what we understand from this chart this is how the journey of gold has been a very good support level around 1050 but then a good resistance around 1400 and that 1400 has been broken why because coronavirus pandemic trade wars happening brexit issues unclarity of uh, us china trade war or us china relations a threat of a nuclear war what happened with north korea what happened with iran what happened with oil price for between saudi and russia all these factors accounted together gold prices have gone up right one of the most important commodities you can always uh, keep a check on this right so i told you how much gold moves i told you how it is priced i have told you how what happened in the past similarly if you see another commodities so commodities i told you uh, these are precious metals gold silver platinum palladium right so just give you a small example gold we understood how it works similarly silver how silver works silver is more of an industrial metal so it is not a safe heaven like gold it's still a precious metal but it not it's not necessary that it will always follow what gold uh, where gold is moving then there are base metals like copper right copper moves copper moves a lot on the uh, manufacturing news so whenever there's a slowdown in china and manufacturing copper prices will come down so copper is more like industrial metal then there are soft commodities wheat corn rice sugar uh, soya bean coffee uh, sugar orange juice tobacco so there is i told you and then similarly there are soft commodities cotton wool timber rubber feeder cattle live ox so commodities guys they always move on the trends so one thing which you really have to understand about commodities is uh see something what we called the nature of the market the nature of the commodities market it is not very simple but then it's very understandable just for you in the future when and again we'll do this together always pay attention to a factor that is unique to commodities as opposed to other investment vehicles and that is called something called seasonality okay nearly all major commodity markets they follow a established seasonal price pattern i'll give you a very simple example see something which is uh, okay natural gas natural gas or a heating oil both of these commodities heating oil and natural gas these commodities they if you see year in and year out they rise into the winter months when demand is at the highest and then they decline into summer summers when the demand falls off right so there could be economic conditions that disturb this general pattern from time to time so it's not like that it's always there but most of the time over a 10 10 year period you can reasonably expect that this kind of seasonal price trend will run through. At least eight out of 10 times we have seen that this has worked. And there are specific seasonal patterns like that traders can watch for. Uh, like for example, see, there are a lot of examples. Um, if I say, okay, we did a seasonality pattern in uh, gasoline. Okay, we looked at a data of 15 years and we understood that in last 15 years, every time gasoline prices, they run, like they go down during the winters, gasoline prices. Why? Because there is a lot of snow in, in the roads in America and the cars, they are not used because there is a lot of snow. So the price of gasoline, it actually drops due to lack of demand. But once when the March comes in, when summer starts, that's where they see that the cars have started running on the road and gasoline prices recovered. You'll be surprised to know for 10 to 12 years, this trend has followed that in March, month on month, in last 10 years, March, gasoline prices have always gone up, right? Obviously, situations like pandemic and these things, they always affect. But normally, when you see gasoline prices, there's a seasonality pattern. So there's a seasonality pattern for uh, soya bean prices also. Soya bean, 
America is one of the most important producers of soya bean. So the crop harvesting happens in uh, mid October, mid September or October. So August normally there is not much demand for soya bean. So soya bean prices in August in last six years, if you see in last six years, every August soya bean prices they fall down, right? So this is something which is called seasonality. So there are a lot of strategies which traders do that during the month of March, you know, they would buy or sell depending on what is expected from the price. That's why you have to remember that commodities, they run in trends. They're cyclical in nature. One of the most heavily traded instruments as well. Right now. Second, where is my slide? Okay. Now, there is also something called CFDs. CFDs we can cover tomorrow when we start the platform because when we'll start the platform, now you have understood asset classes. Asset classes, exactly how I explained you it works. CFD is something which is used normally when you are trading. All these asset classes are converted into derivatives or CFDs, something which we'll look on to tomorrow. And for today, just go to these asset classes. What is next now? First, I would uh, really request to everybody who has attended the session today, please come to the session also tomorrow. I know it can be a little uh, boring uh, for you, for me to keep just, you know, for, it will be boring for you that I keep talking throughout one and a half hours because obviously you would like to talk, discuss, and this is like a forum where you can, you know, you put your chats and I try to answer it. But uh, trust me, it, the session can be really uh, worth it. Just take out one and a half hours from your day. At least try. I'm sure everybody is heavily loaded with work from home situation. And then some of you will have kids. So there are a lot of uh, duties which you're juggling around. That's why I really uh, hope and expect, like at least uh, expect you to come. Uh, what next? I'll tell your RMs and you also remind them that they send you daily newsletters. Okay, which will keep you aware about what is happening in the market. A very basic understanding. It's not going to be very complicated. Just read through it. Second, tomorrow, first thing, please request a demo account for your RM. So what I'm doing right now, switching because today markets are closed. So we are not doing the platform bit. But tomorrow we'll learn about CFDs. We'll learn about how to do the trades, short selling, leverage, risk management, stop losses, everything. So tomorrow will be a most important session. So please come tomorrow also. Request a demo account to your RM. So while I'm doing it here, uh, you can do it over there as well. Okay, somebody just asked me that I get in contact with one investment company where they invest our money and uh, give us the return. They told me minimum 20, 15% of the return they will uh, give. Please, uh, I would request you do not get into these things. Anyone who is guaranteeing you a return in the fund world of financial markets, it is guaranteed scam. It cannot happen. If somebody has written in a paper that 20% of return will be given to you by the end of XYZ amount, that is not. When you even invest into a mutual fund, mutual fund is a fund which is distributed. You always hear this thing, mutual fund investment is subject to market risk. Please offer document carefully before you invest. In that speed with a disclaimer, I have disclaimers, 10 disclaimers starting with my presentation. Fixed return. There is no such thing as fixed return from financial markets. It cannot happen. It is not possible. There is a possibility if somebody is telling you that you can make a fixed amount of money in this market, it will not happen. Uh, RMs are your relationship managers. So if you have registered, somebody must have reached you out. If they have not, then um, you can put up a request again and somebody will reach you out. And this that will be the person who will be dedicated to send you some research, give you a demo account, uh, take you through the session also. Uh, also, yeah, so you can use this uh, demo account tomorrow and please be away from such kind of institutions which are giving you a guaranteed return. There is no way. Maybe for three, four months, they give you a guaranteed amount and when you put more money, they can take it away. Read about Accenture. Accenture was a company which did such half of the Emirates, Emirates Airlines stuff. They invested money with it and it did not end well. So nobody can give you... Uh, advice on that is trading in cryptocurrencies legal in ua uh, so there is a very very a mixed approach uh, they they do not allow cryptocurrencies to because transactions are not allowed central bank and uh, so i bought through bitoasis exchange using my emirates islamic uh, debit card which was verified by my emirates id 
But then if I wanted to withdraw that, then Emirates Islamic said that if you withdraw that cryptocurrency here, we have to close your account. You can only do this in New Jersey or somewhere else. So Middle East has a very mixed stance about cryptocurrencies. Going by the laws, it should not be legal. Okay. So, but there are exchanges like BitOasis and others which are uh, providing uh, cryptocurrencies platforms. Safest way to do it is on platforms like ours or other electronic platforms in a form of derivative or a CFD. And I will explain you how CFD works tomorrow. It's a replica of the actual asset. It's not the actual asset. It's the replica. So I'll explain it to you tomorrow. Also, assignment for today. Uh, make a list of 10 global companies which are listed in stock exchange and of which you use the products of. Just make a list. Nothing else. So if you're using an iPhone, if you're wearing Nike sneakers or Skechers sneakers, you eat McDonald's, you eat KFC, you use a Microsoft Dell system, you wear a Gap or you wear a Michael Kors, make a list of 10 such companies, Unilever products, right? Make a list of 10 such companies, make a list for yourself. And tomorrow we will put you, help you out to make a watch list of that. So you can track it throughout that how it is working, right? I'll try to see if the recording of this can be sent to the clients or put it on YouTube so you can always see it. And uh, please, you can always uh, review us on Century Financials on Google. Just review us if you like the session. And we will do this till Thursday. So please come tomorrow. Um, if the day is missed tomorrow, then next I will always be talking about fundamentals and then later on technical and trade. So tomorrow is a very important session, uh, which are... Yes. So somebody asked me if I can uh, provide a list of assets which are highly volatile, like, for example, gold. So, yes, tomorrow we'll create a watch list of such which are heavily traded instruments and we'll trade on it also. And we'll try to understand the risk as well. Right. So we start the session tomorrow itself from four o'clock. It might go to six or might we might end up again at five thirty. Depends on how interested you will be. And we'll uh, meet tomorrow once again. Till then, please stay safe, uh, stay at home and. Once again, a very good evening to all of you. Take care.